Hello, and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be doing the August 2019 horoscope for Sagittarius. And as I'm shuffling the cards, I will go through the transits for the month of August. And the cards that I will be using are the Barbieri Zodiac Oracle deck. The Rider Tarot deck, the Connolly Tarot deck, as well as playing cards. So let me show you. I already have some cards laid out. This will be a sneak peek at the month of September, so we will go over this at the end. Now, Starting off the month of August, Mercury does come direct very late on July 31st. We also have a new moon in Leo that happens very late on July 31st. So we start out the month with this new moon in Leo, which is a doorway or an access point to happiness and authenticity as well as this Mercury coming direct. Which right now we have Mercury retrograde in Cancer. Now when this comes direct, we will still be in pre-shadow. I'm sorry, in post-shadow. And so what this means is that we will still be going through a brief review period where things that you did not face during the Mercury and retrograde can still come up. Following this, we have a moon in Virgo, which will make us feel more practical, more grounded. This is really going to be a good time to work on bettering and improving different areas of your life. You may feel yourself wanting to do some chores around the house wanting to start up a new habit or routine that helps improve your health or your life in some way. Also following that, we will have a moon in Libra. And this will make us feel more peaceful, more harmonious in our life. This may also affect relationships. You may find yourself making compromises or negotiations, finding a way to make peace. Or bring fairness or justice into your life in some way. Following this, the moon will move into Scorpio, and this is the moon's fallen position. And so this is where a lot of fears and securities, things that we tend to hide or stuff down inside of us or avoid, these things tend to come to the surface with the moon in Scorpio. And so anything that is unresolved or anything that you have been avoiding, these are the things that you will have to face when the moon moves into Scorpio. And following this, the moon moves into Sagittarius where we feel a strong desire to seek out 
higher wisdom, higher truth, higher understanding. You may find yourself wanting to work on raising your consciousness. Trying to find meaning and reasoning in your life. Trying to understand others around you. Now on August 11th, we have a few things happening. Mercury does enter Leo. And at this point, Mercury will still be in post-shadow. So we will still be in a review period. However, as it moves into Leo, this changes our communication style. As Mercury was in Cancer, the communication was more sensitive, more emotional, more empathetic. And when Mercury moves into Leo, communication becomes more bold, more outspoken. We are more so speaking from our hearts. Also on the same day, Jupiter comes direct. And if you didn't know, Jupiter has been retrograde and its home sign of Sagittarius. And so we have been in this time of observation and really looking at what abundance, what intentions we really want to bring into our lives. Now, with Jupiter coming direct in Sagittarius, this will bring those things into fruition. You will see abundance come into your life. You will see lessons and challenge, challenges and blessings come into your life. And also on the same day, Uranus stations retrograde. And for those of you who didn't know, for the majority of this month, we have, I'm sorry, of this year, we have had Uranus in Taurus. So this is a brand new generational revolution. And Uranus in Taurus is in its fall position which has a lot to do with Taurus, dealing with stabil stability and values and the things that we love and make us feel comfortable and safe. And Uranus deals with freedom and liberation. Really about elevating us to a higher state of being. And so with Uranus in its fall position of Taurus, this has been really about changing your values and your belief systems. Really freeing yourself from old attachments that make us feel comfortable, that make us feel safe. Really removing yourself from old traditions, old structures that have been put in place that no longer serve you. And so this transit of Uranus and Taurus gives us the opportunity to make those necessary changes. Now, when Uranus stations retrograde in Taurus, this is where things become turbulent. This is where things become chaotic. Uranus and Taurus is the breakdown. It destroys all areas that we are stuck in. And in Taurus, this is dealing with those values, those belief systems, those areas of comfort, of safety. This Uranus and retrograde will break down and tear down these structures that no longer serve us. And if you are holding on to anything that you find valuable that does not serve you anymore, 
that you find comfortable or safe that does not serve you anymore, this Uranus in retrograde will tear that down from underneath you. And so it's very important to work on making these necessary changes before Uranus in retrograde hits because it will tear down any foundation that does not serve you. It will destroy that from underneath you. Also something that does happen as Uranus goes retrograde is we tend to feel a bit lost. The answers or the breakthroughs that we are looking for in our life can tend to not come to us. Life can tend to go in a direction that we do not want it to as Uranus goes retrograde. This electrical energy of breakthrough and revolutions comes to a halt with Uranus and retrograde. Now following this we have the moon moving into Capricorn and this is the moon's detrimental position. This is where the moon starts to become very detached and serious. You may find yourself needing to feel or express your emotions more as the moon comes into Capricorn, as we start to become a bit detached from our feelings. Now, the positive side of this moon in Capricorn is it gives us the ambition and the drive to achieve our goals. So with Moon and Capricorn, you may find yourself wanting to achieve or accomplish a goal. And following this on August 15th, there will be a full moon in Aquarius. And this is a very powerful full moon, especially with Uranus being retrograde. This full moon will bring unexpected breakthroughs, clarity, and answers that you have been seeking. So this full moon is very powerful for bringing clarity into your life. Now with the moon in Aquarius, this is a bit detached. This is focused on more so intelligence than it is emotion. And so you may need to check in with how you are feeling as the moon is in Aquarius. Following this, the moon moves into Pisces, and this is where we can easily get confused or lost, especially when we are trying to go about things logically, trying to analyze the situation, stuck in the details. This is where the confusion or the fog starts to emerge. So with the moon in Pisces, you want to look at your feelings. You want to get in tune with your feelings. You want to follow your intuition. That is what will make sense. That is where you will find the clarity as the moon is in Pisces. Now on August 18th, Mars will enter Virgo. And this is a very powerful transit.
for getting things done, for following routines, schedules, plans. for making improvements. This gives you the passion, the energy, the focus. For daily habits and routines. And work and improvement. On August 19th, Jupiter makes aspects to Saturn. And as this happens, this is our reality check. With Jupiter in Sagittarius and Neptune in Pisces, we have these big dreams, these high hopes. And so when Jupiter makes aspects with Saturn, Saturn sort of does this reality check with Jupiter to see if your dreams, your visions, your plans, your goals, if they are truly realistic. The areas in which you want to grow and expand, are these attainable? Are these achievable? Is this truly realistic? Following this, the moon moves into Aries where we start to feel more passionate, more lively, more active. You may find yourself wanting to take initiative in a new project. You may also find yourself wanting to get out, be more active, get more involved. On August 21st, Venus enters Virgo, and this is a challenging position. Venus in Virgo is in its fall position. And this is due to Venus dealing with love and beauty and imagination and positivity. And Virgo brings us back down to reality with routines, responsibilities, practicality. And so when Venus enters Virgo, you want to be cautious. This can deal with self-love. But the big thing with Venus is relationships. You want to be cautious that you are not being overly critical or overanalyzing the situation dealing with the relationships that you are in. Now the positive note is that with Venus in Virgo, You are able to see the problem areas. You are able to analyze the situation. Therefore, this gives you the ability to improve and to better these areas that need work on in your relationships. Now, following this, the moon moves into Taurus, and this is the moon's exalted position. And so here we feel very comfortable, very safe, very secure. And so when the moon is in Taurus, you may want to get out of your safety, get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Because with this moon in Taurus, This will give you the, de the desire and the comfort to stay in your safety zone. Now on August 23rd, we start Virgo season. So the sun enters Virgo. And this changes our conscious awareness and our behaviors. The overall energy changes from Sun and Leo, which was very lively, very exciting, very adventurous. Leo being in the heart of summer, 
Virgo. Is the sign that transitions us from summer to fall and so this is where things start to become more grounded more serious more practical we are faced with responsibilities we are faced with the areas that we need to work on and improve on And following this, the moon moves into Gemini, where things become very busy and mentally active. You may feel yourself wanting to learn something new, wanting to experience something new. The curiosity is at an all-time high. There is a lot of mental chatter. Following this, the moon moves into Cancer in its home. The moon in its home of Cancer makes us feel more emotional, more empathetic, more connected overall. And then following this, the moon moves into Leo, where our emotions are put on stage. You may become more dramatic, more expressive about your feelings. You may find yourself very confident in expressing your feelings, very bold in how you are expressing your feelings. And you may feel yourself wanting to have more fun, more excitement in your life. And we end the month of August with a new moon in Virgo. This new moon in Virgo is a doorway or an access point to self-improvement. To being more grounded, more practical, more realistic in your approach to life. This new moon is really meant to serve you and to better your life. And that is the month of August. The month of August is very light compared to the month of July with the intensity of the eclipse season and Mercury in retrograde on top of it. In August, we are out of that and things are more light, more easygoing, which should give you the ability to work on yourself. During July, we were in review period with this eclipse season and Mercury in retrograde. We were confronted with the areas that we need to work on in self-reflection mode. And so August gives you the opportunity to work on these areas that were shown to you.
that need improvement. And it's imperative that you work on these areas with this Pluto retrograde, Saturn retrograde, and South Node in Capricorn, along with Uranus and Taurus that will be going retrograde on August 11. Let's see if we can get a right side up card for some clarity. And now I will be pulling from the playing cards. Take a drink of water. Okay, so. So first of all, it feels like a lot of you are stuck. 
This is the new direction. This is the new feeling that you should be moving in. So let's go deeper into this. And I do feel that a lot of you want this victory. This peace, this accomplishment, this achievement at the end. But again, a lot of you are not taking the initiative to move in this direction. A lot of you aren't feeling this desire to move forward into this victory. A lot of you are not feeling like doing the work to get here. And this does show that you will need to leave behind the past. Especially if there are challenges with communication. For a lot of you, it feels like you are trying to make something work. in a relationship where the communication just does not work. This right here feels like arguing and challenging conversations. One that will not bring you peace. And for some of you, this is your thought process as well. For some of you, you are fighting yourself with your thoughts. With these negative thoughts, these negative belief systems. And so this is asking you to leave this in the past. Only take with you what actually serves you. And we have the Empress because in the end, this is about loving yourself. This is about putting yourself first. This is about self-care, self-love. Only put your energy into what you love or what truly serves you. This argument or these negative thoughts do not serve you. You are stuck in this place and it does not serve you. Move yourself out of that feeling. Move yourself out of that direction. And we see this again with the moon. This is about your feelings. And this is a Pisces card. And so a lot of you are putting yourselves in situations where you are taking on negative energy from others. Again, if we go back to the Five of Swords, there is this relationship or this environment where the conversation or the discussion is not positive, it does not serve you. 
and you need to remove yourself from this. Now again, for some of you, this is you. This is you having to deal with your own thoughts, your own feelings. But for a lot of you, this is receptive. This is you taking on things that do not belong to you. So some of you need to move yourselves out of this environment. Again, the Six of Pentacles. A lot of you are staying around too long in these situations that do not serve you. A lot of you need to change your environment. You need to put yourself around people who uplift you, not bring you down. A lot of you are right here stuck in the crowd that does not serve you. And this has to do with your harmony, your peace. A lot of you are lacking it. And it is physical. It is the environment that you are in. And again, the Eight of Pentacles... Notice that this door is open to you. And a lot of you are stubborn. A lot of you are staying stuck. When the door is open to you for you to move through. This is about movement. A lot of you need to change your locations. Change your environment. Even if that means hanging around these negative situations or situations that do not serve you for a shorter period of time. A lot of you are staying in these toxic environments. And again, we see this again with the Knight of Cups and the Emperor in reverse. A lot of you are carrying these negative feelings and you are giving away your power. A lot of you are not in healthy environments. Where this is just draining your energy. And we have the high priestess because you need to only take on your feelings. This is a moon energy. This is about your feelings. And a lot of you need your space, your time. You need to be with yourself and do some self-reflection for a lot of you. A lot of you are not in tune with your feelings. Instead, you're taking on other feelings around you.
You're carrying a lot that does not belong to you. So a lot of you need to, to release and remove yourself from these environments. One second. Okay, so now we will look at the Barbieri Zodiac Oracle deck. And again, Mercury is in retrograde. We have this Mercury in reverse. So a lot of you are not moving. A lot of you are staying stuck where you are. And for some of you, this could be a lack of communication not speaking on how you feel but for some of you it is simply about staying stuck in the environment that you are in mercury being the ruler of gemini gemini being the ruler of the third house dealing with your familiar surroundings a lot of you are staying in the same environments that do not serve you. When we see that again with the sun in reverse, a lot of you are not doing what serves your internal happiness, your truth, your well being. which is blocking your growth, your expansion. This is your Jupiter. This is your time to grow, to expand, to accept the abundance that is coming into your life. But you must remove yourself from these situations that do not truly make you happy. And we have Venus in reverse. Again, going back to that Empress, a lot of you need to do what serves you. A lot of you are missing this self-love. Instead, you are putting others first or taking on energies from other people. This does not serve you. And we have Capricorn in reverse. Again, you're stuck. You're stuck in these old relationships, these old environments, these old systems that do not serve your well-being.
and Pisces in reverse. Again, going back to that moon card. A lot of you are taking on the emotions, the energies of other people, carrying this weight. that doesn't serve you in any way. A lot of you need to learn to go with the flow and to feel, connect with yourself and go with the flow of the universe, trust in the process. And Virgo is here, so we need to start being more realistic, more practical about the environment that we're in, the people that we're around, the energies that we take on. For a lot of you, this deals with that Mercury in reverse, moving yourself into a situation that better serves you. Five of Hearts is here, so again, these negative feelings, these negative energies that you are taking on. We need to change that so that you can have your abundance, your success, your happiness. The number five actually relates back to the sun, relating to the self, relating to your internal happiness. And so for a lot of you, you need to change these energies or environments that you are taking on. And the Ace of Spades is here. Big sign of new beginnings. We need, we need this new beginning. And it does deal with the people that you're around. It deals with communication. It deals with these conversations, these arguments. For some of you, it's a lack of communication, of connection. This needs to be cut out or removed. We need to start fresh, this new beginning. And notice that this spade here is in reverse because we need to change the energy that is being taken on. This is taking you out of a situation that no longer serves you. Changing this. And a lot of you this is clubs, this is fire. A lot of you need to take action to bring that balance into your life. The two energy, that balance. A lot of you are not taking action. You're stuck where you are. You're doing the same thing every single day, taking on the same energies for a lot of you. So a lot of you need to take action to put your life into balance. And again, to remove yourself from this place that you're stuck in. Cut out 
these old foundations that no longer serve you. And so that was looking at the month of August. I will now give you the preview of the month of September. And so we start out with Neptune. So for some of you, you're starting out in a place of fear, a place of illusion. Because this fear that you're feeling is an illusion. Now, for some of you, this is you finally starting to dream big, finally starting to dream for yourself, finally starting to detach yourself from these energies, these feelings, these emotions that don't belong to you, that don't serve you. Now this change, this revolution, this breakthrough is still closed to you, however. And so this almost feels like you are seeing clearly now, you are seeing this change that has to happen. You are seeing through the illusions but you're not necessarily making these changes yet. With Aquarius in reverse, there is this resistance to change. And we see this again with Pluto in reverse. A lot of you it still feels like you're stuck. It still feels like you're not willing to transform, to go through this change, through this death, through this rebirth. And here it is, Saturn, stuck in these old systems, these old routines for a lot of you. This is what you've been doing. This is what you've already experienced that hasn't worked. And so this is where you need to make those changes. Now for some of you, this is showing that you will finally put these new systems in place. Changing these old systems. But for a lot of you, this is showing that you are still stuck. Still committed to these old relationships that don't serve you. Still committed to these old thoughts that don't serve you. Still committed to these old environments, these old situations that don't serve you. And so for a lot of you, September could be the month where you make the changes or September could be the month where you remain in the same situation. So you have to make that decision for yourself if you are going to work at this or not. So that was your August 2019 horoscope, Sagittarius, and a preview at September. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. If you are new to this channel, 
Don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. And I hope you all have a great day.